Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Sorry there was no video yesterday. My throat was just in absolute bits. Um, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it's because I did three videos, two on the main channel and then one on the Patreon and then I had work as well. And my voice just went, nah, that's enough that you've been talking too much today. Um, and yeah, I just couldn't do a video yesterday. Um, so sorry about that, but back on the video today and we're gonna talk about free stocks. Free stocks that have been doing some interesting moves. One that I own, uh, two that I don't own. Um, so yeah, we'll get started. So first of all, I'm gonna start with DraftKings. This is quite a brief one. Um, just wanna say, what a brilliant day it had yesterday. Um, up 6% and basically that ugly drop we had after the inflation data, the stock basically recovered all of that drop and went even higher. That's a really positive sign from DraftKings. So yeah, DraftKings has been doing really well, up 15% in the last five days. So uh, performing very well on the share price. I think a lot of people are really getting excited because of the start of the NFL season and the data that we talked about a few days ago, DraftKings, is looking really strong from the volume that are using the platform and also the hold rate looks pretty good from the first weekend. So uh, obviously we've got two more weekends of the NFL season in this quarter, so uh, we'll keep an eye on it. But first of all, the first bit of key news with DraftKings, there was two pieces. First of all, this is a big one. DraftKings actually entered the top 10 in the App Store. That's correct. DraftKings is in the top 10. So you can see here, um, we've got a game called X Hero, which I have never heard before. Um, ESPN, TikTok at number four. Uh, we've got Google at six, Disney at eight, uh, YouTube at nine. And at number 10, uh, we have DraftKings. So that's really good to see DraftKings breaking into that top 10 app. Uh, apps on the App Store this weekend after that NFL season. I think it's worth uh, pointing out that to put it into context that Fangio, uh, which is basically DraftKings' biggest rival in this space, um, was somewhere down at 30, I believe. I don't know if it's actually on here. We'll have a quick look and see if we can find it. I actually can't find it in the top 50, so that's even more impressive that uh, DraftKings' closest rival, Fangio, isn't even in the top 50, and they've you know, broke into that top 10 in the App Store. So that's great news to see that it's, that's how much positivity uh, or, you know, the tracking on it at the moment is performing. The next thing is price targets. So there was a price target, and I think this is probably yesterday, um, what really moved the stock up because of this uh, price target upgrade. Uh, so you'll see here that there was a price target yesterday from $31, which is obviously uh, you know, still really bullish of, you know, where it is right now. Um, but yeah, it went from $31 to $34, and that would potential upside of 95%. So obviously analysts uh, set their price targets over a year. So clearly, that is a, a big amount of upside from here. So um, yeah, I think that was quite a positive upgrade. Obviously, plenty of upside from here. Um, I don't think it'll be too long until we see the days where DraftKings is back in that $30 range. So um, yeah, really positive news for DraftKings. The next thing comes from um, Starbucks. So Starbucks had a fantastic day yesterday, up 5%, now to $93. Now Starbucks was a stock that when we are having the big ugly market through November all the way to kind of June time, this was a stock that I was actually really considering picking up. Um, at the time, it was trading around a P ratio of 20. The dividend yield was somewhere high 3% range. And I was thinking, okay, a quality stock, not a bad valuation, really big dividend on it. And as it just kept dropping and dropping and dropping, I was like, oh, maybe if it gets into the 70s, maybe the 60s, and it briefly touched the 60s at $1.68. And I was really starting to consider building up a position here. Unfortunately, it was one of those where it only got into my buying range for a brief period of time, only about a month, and then it did go on quite a bit of a rally, as you can see here, up from them uh, lows of 30%. So yeah, Starbucks has been really well performing uh, over the last few months. I'm starting to cover some of the dip. So a little bit gutted that it wasn't able to build up a star position, but the news why they moved so positive yesterday was actually really interesting. I saw this news and I was like, wow, this is, uh, this is ambitious. So I can't remember exactly where he was doing the speech, or actually they might say here. Yeah, it was the Starbucks investor meeting in Seattle on Tuesday. So um, yeah, basically Howard Schultz, the founder who's actually come back into the business right now, um, actually came out with some really ambitious targets in that meeting. So he said that they were gonna spend another 450 million to overhaul its coffee machines and stores. And a quite strong words, he said that the company had lost its way in recent years, but he said that their best days for Starbucks is ahead of them. And he said that it would rebound faster than it had after an early crisis in 2008. And he said that the company would deliver double digit revenue increases long term at the top end of early projections with similar expansion in profits and then the CFO came on and said that he's going to he hail this as a new era of growth saying Starbucks earnings could expand by 15 to 20% annually over the next 
uh, three years compared to the 10 to 12 percent it had previously guided for so this is insane this is you know starbucks a company which has you know it's getting to quite a mature state you know they've got a lot of locations everywhere basically coming out and saying yeah we're going to be like you know a growth company basically i mean obviously they've been having gr really fantastic growth um you know in the last few years but even faster growth now so these are really ambitious targets from starbucks and obviously investors liked what they heard um, I guess the big thing is now can they execute on that because that is a uh, that's really big targets they set out for themselves so one to keep watching there because yeah it's a uh, it's, uh, it's a big big targets to set out so yeah one to watch there the last one was Dunelm so a UK company and as a lot of UK companies have done they've been absolutely killed um, so if you look here we had a 52 week high is around about uh, 15 pound since then it's lost about 50 percent of its value uh, exactly 50 percent that was a pretty good guess um down to seven pound 47 now trades at 10 times earnings and pays a chunky dividend of a 4.7 percent dividend yield so yeah quite interesting to see that basically all the gains it's had through the cv situation it's giving it back and more and the share price is, looks pretty good value at 10 percent and also to be kept, you know collecting a pretty good dividend like that pretty interesting opportunity and this comes off the back of what was a very good update on their earnings so depending on what you want to use and um, you could say here you know when you compare it to a 52 week to a 52 week they had 16 percent growth which is absolutely fantastic the gross margins did get hit slightly not that much though but they did get hit slightly and um, obviously that's with a lot of the impacts that we're seeing with a lot of companies at the moment so yeah not too bad on that point of view but you can see the profit uh, before tax as well was still up 32%, which is impressive amounts of growth there as well. And you can see here, they're gonna pay a lower special dividend, but the ordinary dividend has gone up a fair bit at the moment as well. Now, what was quite interesting was on the outlook, the outlook was really positive. They basically said sales have remained robust in the first 10 weeks of the financial year and expected to deliver 50% gross margins for the full year and manage costs through efficiency improvements and operational grip. So yeah, they basically said that what analysts have been forecasting, so if we look at analyst forecasts right now, they're expecting uh, profit to drop slightly. Obviously, that's probably to do with that gross margins dropping and the profit margins dropping slightly. Uh, but they're expecting revenue to be, you know, hold on to the gains they've been making, especially in the last two years. You know, the revenue has gone from 1.1 uh, 1 billion um, up to 1.5 billion. And you see the profit went from 113 million um, up to 169 million. So the business is in a way better place than where it was two years ago. Um, so it's going to hold on to the gains that it's been making. And then analysts are expecting that in the year after then they go back to offering some amounts of growth and the profit starting to move uh, back in the right direction and then um, yeah i was quite surprised to see dunelm come out with like a really positive trading statement like still saying that you know we've seen a few companies come out and say that sales are struggling a little bit or margins are getting hit massively margin seems to be holding okay obviously they're going down a little bit still but still holding okay um the sales were still pretty strong and there's still pretty strong sales recently as well and you know you look at the share price which is you know down 50 percent and you're thinking you know with a bit of a trading update like this you'd see it you know do quite well on share price you know not a bad valuation at 10 times earnings picking up nearly five percent dividend yield and yeah i mean literally the stock was kind of up like three percent on the day and i was this was what i was really shocked by i was like you know really good strong earnings report and it's gets even though it's down 50 percent it just went eh it was okay we're gonna hold it here and that was just a bit of a complete weird move to me so yeah i thought that would deserve a bit of a pop really and um, so yeah i mean we're done now i'm looking at it personally for me and it, i think it's a good valuation you know obviously a lovely dividend that you're picking up here my only concern with something like a Dunelm is obviously it's a brick and mortar store and I've already got quite a few of them in my portfolio from the likes of Card Factory for example and um, you know JD Sports for example and I mean you could class like Hollywood Ball as a bit of a brick and mortar not as a store but you know as a bit of a leisure complex and I think that would be hurt very much in a recession as well. So I've got a few companies here that if there was a drop off in the high street foot, you know, footfall or if people spend a bit less money, um, they might get affected. Um, obviously, you know, considering, you know, the, the rising costs for a lot of physical locations as well at the moment. So I do look at Dunelm and I'll be like, I'm, I, you know, I do think it's, you know, a pretty interesting opportunity right now. And I would probably not mind to own it, to be fair, at these sort of valuations. My only issue is that. I don't know if it's a right fit for my portfolio personally because I already have quite a bit of exposure in not a, a stock that's like Dunelm but would have the same sort of risks to them um, with the likes of a recession, footfall, for example. So, yeah, um, bit 
50-50 on this one. Um, I'd love to hear your, your guys' opinions in the comment section. But yeah, I think this is a really interesting opportunity right now. I, I, I do rate it a buy. I just don't know if it's a good fit for my portfolio personally. Um, but yeah, I, I was just really surprised to see that come out with such strong numbers and then um, basically have no reflection in the share price, which is just insane. So thought I'd shout that one out anyway. So yeah, just talking about free stocks really quickly, guys. I thought they all didn't have enough information for their own video, but if I give them a two or three, two or three minute shout out, then I thought that could be quite an interesting topic. So hope you enjoyed it. And um, it's been such a quiet week for the news on like the stock market. Like trying to get a video together has been quite hard, but yeah, I thought these these were uh, this was a pretty good idea anyway. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it anyway, guys. And uh, yeah, smash that like button if you're new, subscribe. Uh, oh, thanks for thirteen thousand subscribers as well, by the way. Um, and yeah, I'll catch. Wait a bit.